Hello amazing hackers, hope you're doing well today. Uh, what I was going to demonstrate is how I do a general pen test of a web application. Because pen testing has many different flavors of course, as we all know. You have the mobile pen test, the web pen test, the network pen test, the humble IoT pen test, and there's so much more pen testing that you can do um, and my specialty is web app pen testing of course I know network pen testing um, but my assignments of the majority of them will be web application based at least a week is what I do for most um, most applications that are medium to large in size Large is more like four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks in man hours. Um, and that's eight man hours a day. Um, so that's a pretty lengthy period. But as you guys will see, I need that time as well. Because first of all, of course, I'm going to have to start exploring my website. And I have a couple of possibilities for it. I have OWASP Zap as a middle man in the middle proxy, or I have Burp Suite as a man in the middle proxy. Um, now I start up with Burp Suite, and I'll tell you guys why as well later on. Um, but I start out with Burp Suite, and I right now I'm just gonna make a temporary project, but I usually save it, and that's why I have Burp Suite Pro. That's why I buy that, because Burp Suite Pro will give me that ability to save projects basically that's the biggest reason that i get it um the first thing i have to do is set my scope so i'm gonna go to target scope of course and i use advanced scope control now in here why do i do this because if i have like a scope that is broad like this i can enter a regular expression here otherwise that wouldn't be possible Today I'm going to try and hack for hexpert.com and I'm going to show you guys some of the very basics first. So I'm going to open up a browser. I usually use the Burp Suite built-in browser because right now it can actually remember passwords. Um, and I'm going to hack RedSite. Now RedSite, some of you might have already seen this, but it's a website I've been developing with Brandon and soon Noor as well. So I'm going to enter a username and a password in here because that's the first thing I see. I'm going to try to guess default passwords for this web application. Now, of course, probably there will be an admin account, an administrator account. There might be many different accounts in here, um, a test account because they might be lazy. There might be a red bag shop account. There might be many different permutations of this. And if there's no brute forcing, uh, if there's no rate limiting enabled on this part of the website, then I can very easily brute force it, which is definitely not the intended way of doing things. So in pen testing, the rate limiting is pretty important. You always test for it because it will allow for things like credential stuffing. Now, that being said, I know that in here I log in with administrator and the password is test. By the way, feel free to hack along, you guys, if you would like. Let me throw this in the Discord channel. There we go. So, um, if you guys want to hack along, feel free to. And first of all, I'm going to start exploring my website. Users, orders, I can see create new order. I can edit orders. Um, and it's important that I inspect all of these things and look what's possible here. And while I do that, I'm going to inspect the source code very often as well. I will get back into that later because that source code becomes quite important. If I'm testing for cross-site scripting, for example. So as you can see, I might test for reflective cross-site scripting here through several attack factors. Um, but that's something I'm going to do the moment I enter my application, even while I'm functionally exploring it. I am actually going to um, going to throw this attack factor into every single input field that I see. So even when I register, I'm going to register with that username. Uh, that 
let's make it this so it's unique and a password as well um, so there we go and then i can log in with that user and that password and in the beginning he's going to be a low privileged user now i can see there's a broken image in here already which means that the username is susceptible to at least html injection and i might be able to upgrade this to cross-site scripting as well but since this is still self cross-site scripting there's not much vulnerability here yet because it's just the home page now I can go back to the home page but for the rest there's nothing for me to do with that low privileged user gonna need that for later though so i'm gonna keep it in the back of my mind now when i'm exploring my website i've clicked around on everything pretty deliberately and i'm going to quickly go back and actually create some values as well so i have those calls in burp suite so let's make an adjustment here and let's, let's submit that going back to invoices then we can actually create a new invoice as well but there we go and you guys might have this two viewers of you might have already noticed i forgot something to insert that attack factor into every single field that i see of course uh, not a good one on Claret. I have to be more careful about that. Now, okay, there we go. Um, I've tried the insertion. I've tried the, maybe should create the orders as well. And I can already see some cross-site scripting from a previous test here that will be marked as a known issue, of course. This, of course, should also not be possible. And that's what would be a logic vulnerability. Those logic vulnerabilities are very important that you understand that they can exist because business logic requires you to understand the logic behind the application first. And that is not an easy thing to do. It can take a few days, which is why that week can get very short. Because if you take two days to explore your application, you only have three more days to actually hack it. And this is a small application, but as you guys will soon see, there's more here than meets the eye. Now, you can from here on out also start the Burp Suite Spider with the engagement tools. And then I can go for Discover Content right here. And as you can see, it's going to go to Hexpert, Discover Content on that page and report back to me. While that's running in the background, I don't have to stare at it, of course. Um, I can do some more exploration. And as you can see, my automatic scanner picked up some issues here. Issues are not really that useful in this case. Now, I, what I can also test for... Um, by the way, that noise is back. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that as well um, it's quite annoying nope not coming from you mr hellfire I'm going to quickly pause my 